I now call this regular meeting of the Davenport Community School District Board of Directors to order. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Director Gordon, would you please read the mission and vision statements? Mission statement. The Davenport Community School District is dedicated to growing excellence in academics, arts, and athletics for every child by ensuring the highest quality education in an environment shaped by our diverse community, preparing our students to be lifelong learners and productive citizens. Vision statement. Education that cha challenges conventional thinking, prepares all students to compete in a global society, and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you, Director Gordon. Director Poshin, would you please read the guiding principles? Guiding principles. Opportunity. We provide abundant opportunities to empower students to reach their full potential academically, creatively, and socially. Collaboration, we foster an environment that allows students, families, and community stakeholders to come together for betterment of our students' education and future. Transparency, we share rele re relevant and important information with our students, families, and the community to maintain open and productive communication. Thank you, Director Poshin. Superintendent Schnackloff, would you please read the goals? Goal number two and goal number three for tonight, continue relationship building between the board and superintendent in the areas of trust and communication. And number three is the expectation of the board that the district finance issues are resolved and the staff will, and staff will continue to keep the district in, in compliance with all state reporting mandates. Thank you, and there are no recognition tonight, recognitions tonight. Uh, student board reports, student board members. On the north side, uh, on November 18th, uh, eight students performed at the Allstate Musical uh, Music Festival at Iowa State, uh, three from choir and five in the concert orchestra. Uh, construction for a new stage in our auditorium begins uh, today, and due to construction, our annual children's show, High School Musical Junior, will be moved to the small gym at North. Uh, performance dates for that are December 10th and 11th at 2 p.m. Our theater workshops will be held in the same space from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on December 10th, open to students in grades K through 8. Uh, check out the Instagram at uh, troop, T-R-O-U-P-E, uh, 3994 for more information and a link to purchase tickets and register for the workshops. Also from our theater program, One Intermediate's performance of Charlotte's Web. Uh, will be on December 5th at 6 p.m. in the Wood Cafeteria. Uh, our junior thespian coordinators have been working with Wood's Drama Club since the beginning of the school year to prepare this show. Uh, also, the annual Messiah Winter Concert is scheduled for 1129, which is tomorrow, at 7 p.m. at the Adler, where over a 1,000 choir, orchestra, and band students from North, Central, and West will perform together. It is very exciting and we all hope to see you there. Um, bowling has started off really strong this year at North, and we've got high hopes for all of our bowlers, uh, and Northeast Esports will be starting up very soon. Thank you. Then down on the south side, wait, that's a Mopi song. Down on the west side, uh, ooh, am, I, am I loud? Sorry, it seems louder than normal. <clears throat> um, on Tuesday, the 29th at 11.10, the uh, Special Olympics Unified uh, team at WES is going to be hosting a, oh, and they turned the volume down, sweet. Uh, we'll be hosting a basketball game for the uh, last 10 minutes of, uh, or at the, start, starting at the last 10 minutes of second block. Uh, there's a permission slip that is available. Um, you probably, I believe, get at the activities office. Um, if you want to attend, um, parade is your students only. I don't know if you guys would uh, be interested in basketball, but hey, you can always get the call. 
And then uh, just like uh, just like Landon said over uh, over at West, we are going to be starting an esports team of our own. I believe Central is also starting one, so all all three of the uh, the major high schools will have their own esports team. And then uh, last thing I got is uh, next uh, Friday, which is December 9th, uh, the uh, help desk team. Uh, at West, which consists of uh, me, Thomas Sturbins, and Curtis Campbell, as well as uh, some of our Cyber Club members, will be uh, assisting an event with the with the middle schools uh, to help sign them up for uh, CTE classes for when they start their high school career. Um, CTE being our career and technical education, which can be uh, anything from IT to um, to cooking uh, and even welding. So, uh, if, uh, if any of your students are in middle school, or if a middle schooler actually is brave enough to watch this, then uh, look forward to that. And if you if you have any interest, I believe there is a uh, CTE website. I don't have that written down, but you can go on to Davenport Schools and look for CTE and see if there's maybe a pathway that interests you. Thank you, student board members. Uh, board reports, are there any board reports? Y'all just got back from the ISB convention, no board reports, no board reports, okay. Um, I do wanna note uh, thank you to the city of Davenport that the parking in the ramp downtown Davenport tomorrow will be free for the concert. So Superintendent Schneckloff got it done. Um, as I said, uh, we did have the uh, annual ISB convention. Our board, I had enough board members get the board excellence award. So the entire uh, district received that which I believe you got the plaque and everything for that. Um, and then also, I want to make everyone aware that the board will hold a special call open meeting on December 5th from 5.30 to 6.15 for the sole purpose of holding an open forum and will follow the standard open forum procedure. The meeting will adjourn at 6.15 and the board will then hold its regularly scheduled committee of the whole meeting beginning at 6.30. We wanted to make sure we gave the public time for open forum before our committee of the whole meeting. All right, any other board reports? Seeing none, do we we'll move on to presentations? I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you very much. Tonight with us, we have John from Gray and our entire cabinet, we're going to be presenting to you um, <clears throat> our first um, leg of our long range facility plan that we are gonna be bringing before the board at the Committee of the Whole on the 5th. Um, right now, we have spent hours and hours and hours working on our boundaries as those boundaries that are proposed for the buildings that we're seeing now, because that's kind of the, the, the kingpin for everything. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do, we're going to go over in this, but we're really trying to um, minimize the amount of moves that our student has, balance some of our populations out, things of that nature. And so we've really been working really hard to put together the information the board needs to make a good decision. So John, thanks for joining us and cabinet members, please feel free to join in at any time. And for board members, anything that you would have received ahead of the holiday, because of the holiday, it added some complications. So what you'll see tonight it just has some of the blanks filled in. So hopefully it's uh, still easy to follow. So uh, we're going to talk through the organizational change, some discussion that starts the consideration of boundary changes, enrollment capacity, transition strategy, staffing and supports, and then costs and expenses. I'm gonna kind of work through all of this and then uh, come back to anything through discussion. However, as always, if you have any questions or, or uh, need something repeated along the way, by all means, feel free to uh, just halt and let me know. So first, district organization. So first and foremost, just wanna revisit what we've been talking about to date. So our, uh, 
master plan uh, had a, a, a strong leaning towards supporting a new pathway that would reorganize the district as a K-5 elementary with a 6-8 middle school and then our 9-12 high school. In that master plan, we identified buildings to close to help bring efficiencies to the district. And uh, we'll talk about what some of those efficiencies are as we move through the presentation. The initial buildings identified to be closed in this uh, first step are Buchanan Elementary, Monroe Elementary, and Washington Elementary. Students from those buildings will be redistributed to adjacent uh, attendance centers. No construction will be necessary to accommodate students at the other buildings. So it does not require any additional uh, construction expense. This plan does take advantage of existing capacity within the elementary buildings, which is why we can accommodate them without any additional construction. The pathway of transition from elementary school to middle school will be improved, more cleanly defined and, and understood. And then once these initial steps are completed, the district does have the opportunity to consider additional projects, additional closures, after we complete these initial steps. It's a good idea to do this uh, in, in phases and tiptoe your way in so that you understand that you're making the right decisions before considering any more aggressive steps. The selection of schools to be closed is based on a, a significant number of considerations. This doesn't even begin to list everything. But first and foremost, three buildings were selected because it does allow us to distribute regionally between the eastern, northwestern, and southwestern regions of the city. This uh, follows with how the city is distributed for high schools. And so working through the eastern, northwestern, and southwestern, we, we found three schools to be identified. Monroe and Washington were uh, the eastern and southwestern identified buildings, and they were selected. A few of the factors include the age of the building, prospective costs associated with facility study recommendations. We'll touch on what these costs are a little bit later. Small existing classrooms and multi-story construction are more difficult and expensive to change and improve. And then proximity to the existing intermediate school buildings uh, necessitate that uh, removing these buildings would create additional space that would allow those middle school buildings to expand and improve more easily. So the Monroe and Washington uh, buildings create constraints on Sudlow and Smart. Buchanan was identified, and here's a few factors for that. There is lower enrollment than that at Fillmore and Harrison. Truman has had the most recent investment for building improvements. There's been a significant investment there that has uh, uh, improved that building uh, over the recent years. Fillmore, Harrison, and Truman are more closely aligned with primary access routes, which provide better accessibility for students, families, buses, and, and other uh, logistical concerns. This also redistributes uh, students from Buchanan to buildings that are located within higher density of population. It also provides the opportunity for distribution potentially to Walcott or Jackson as an, op as an option. Within each region, there is an opportunity to distribute to an additional fourth building to allow appropriate capacity within all buildings. So we initially identified three but we do have adjacent fourth buildings that would help us even uh, better distribute uh, working within the capacity of all buildings. We'll actually touch on what those enrollment numbers and capacity look like as we, as we move through this. Once the sixth grade moves to middle school buildings, additional space will allow for the creation of preschool within each elementary building. We are talking about moving anywhere from one to three sections of sixth grade out of each uh, middle school or uh, elementary school building to the middle schools, which will create one to three classrooms at each building. What does that organization look like? Um, we've, we've talked this through before, but just a, a quick reminder. Uh, the elementary schools are in blue. The 
uh, very light blue off to the left is the three buildings uh, being closed. The arrows point to the buildings where those students will be redistributed. The uh, center column in, in the teal color is the junior high buildings. And then the uh, chartreuse colored column on the right is the high schools. As we look at this, Monroe will distribute primarily to Hayes, Jefferson, and Wilson. Washington will distribute to Madison, McKinley, and Garfield. And Buchanan will distribute to Fillmore, Truman, and Harrison. Once these distributions are made, one of the goals that was uh, discussed in the strategy was a, a clean and understandable transition from elementary to middle. So we can see now that we have three elementary feeders for each junior high. Moving from junior high to high school, we show the lines of where those junior highs support the high schools, keeping in mind that the high schools still have an open enrollment uh, policy, so any student can enroll in any high school in the district. So uh, Walcott uh, Elementary, Bluegrass, and Buffalo Elementary will uh, send their middle schoolers to Walcott. Jackson, Hayes, Jefferson, and uh, excuse me, there's four here. Uh, Jefferson, Hayes. Hey, John, yes. can you zoom that in a little bit? I don't know if I can. Let's or will it make it fuzzy? I can. Thank you. Hayes, Jefferson, Wilson, and Jackson will support the Smart Middle School. Madison, McKinley, Garfield, Eisenhower will be a feeder to Sudlow. And Adams, Fillmore, Truman, Harrison will be the feeder to Wood. And I believe we're somehow missing Williams in there. I think I have the wrong graphic. I apologize for that. As we move forward with this, the timeline would look as such. So right now we're in that uh, end of November um, with the vote being the, the December 12th date. Uh, that would be the date in which the board decides to close elementary schools. Once this happens, as we jump into the spring semester, Elementary school attendance boundaries will need to be adjusted and transition planning will need to occur for both students and staff and, and student families. We see that occurring uh, immediately and working through the entire summer so that as students enter and, and uh, begin classes at their new buildings, that they feel that they're welcomed at home and uh, we've had a chance to uh, remove any confusion and help them understand the, this change. So the, the actual closure of the schools will happen at the start of the 23-24 school year. As discussed previously, sixth graders would remain in the elementaries for the 23-24 school year. The new uh, organization of sixth through eight middle school would start at the beginning of the 24-25 school year. Also as an opportunity at the start of the 24-25 school year, the district could opt to initiate pre-K at each of the elementary buildings. Also, in this time frame, the district could elect to utilize some of their funds. It has been stated that a goal is to consider improvements at the high school level. There is currently ongoing work being considered at West High School. The one high school that is in need of some work is North. There is an opportunity to consider projects to make improvement at North High School that would not require a bond referendum and they would not affect any taxes. They would utilize current Save and Pepple funding and it could be completed in a way that would be ready for occupancy and, and utilization at the beginning of the 25-26 school year. So this is the start of a timeline of how projects could start to come into the district and, and make improvements. So from a boundary standpoint, 
there's a series of considerations. This has been uh, a series of very long and intensive meetings. It is a, a bit of a tricky uh, thing to wrap your head around. And there's a series of factors that affect how you start to move boundaries and make decisions. Building enrollment versus available capacity is first and foremost. We uh, have a limit on how many students we can put in a building. Every time you move a uh, boundary from one elementary, it affects the capacity or the enrolled number at another. So every move is affecting anywhere from two to three, sometimes even four buildings, depending on how the boundaries touch each other. The impact of sixth grade moving to the middle school is a factor, meaning if we uh, project too low of a number of students at any elementary, we run the risk of having too small of a population when the sixth graders move to the middle school, which could become an operational non-efficiency. So trying to look for a good number that works while sixth graders are there during the 23-24 school year with the understanding that the following year it will be K-5. This is a number that we're looking in two ways. Busing and transportation costs and distant factors. Those are impacts that do affect some of the decisions being made. Distribution of uh, funds within the district is also an important factor. At the elementary level, the district currently has a ratio of 35 to 65% low income. It is a goal to work to balance the ratios for each building as much as possible. Attempting to avoid future boundary change modifications. So looking at how boundaries can change now to support the long-term uh, long master plan so that we're not looking at boundary changes again in a few years. That causes disruption and confusion to people and trying to do a one-time change is uh, going to take some careful planning. Safe walk paths, also uh, as, just as important as busing. Uh, as I discussed, considering future pathways to minimize future changes. And then the, the big uh, crunch is that December 31st is a state deadline for boundary map updates. That means this work will come to quick finalization over the next couple weeks so that the board can make a boundary decision on the December 12th meeting. That will allow the district to get all this uh, change submitted to the state in accordance with those rules. So I'm not going to show a map because it's a floating series of boundaries. We will show that map as the numbers are finalized. The numbers are looking at projected enrollment, the ratio of, of our uh, low income to, to uh, non uh, low income, and then working within the available uh, minimum and maximum capacities. Um, this is a moving target. The, the goal is to try to hit the buildings where the number of enrolled students doesn't exceed the average capacity, so the median of capacity. We're not trying to fill each building to the maximum capacity because that will be tight. We're also not trying to fill to the minimum capacity because we understand that when sixth graders move out, now that building's gonna be still even further disadvantaged from a, a capacity standpoint. So we are trying to balance these numbers to hit in or around that median average capacity. As I jump ahead, I have a better graphic to show enrollment versus capacity. So using those numbers that were just shown, we're illustrating where the projected enrollment is in a center column. Uh, the the left-hand side of this screen is a minimum. The right hand is a maximum. This is using today's 22-23 enrollment information. We also are not calculating anything for Buffalo, Bluegrass, and Walcott because we're not considering a change to those three buildings at this time. So the projected enrollment is illustrated against the minimum 
capacity range, and then in the right column, the maximum capacity range, and then we illustrate where we're over or under capacity. And again, the lower the number, either in an over or under the better, because we're, we're hitting somewhere in that uh, median if we can. What does this signify? It signifies that we can make the redistribution of students from Buchanan, Monroe, and Washington without overburdening the existing buildings that we're distributing to. So this does work. It does require boundary change, but that change is being calculated so that the capacities and the enrolled numbers do match. We've also calculated what does the middle school capacity look like when sixth graders move to those buildings. Why are we interested in knowing that? Because we need to know if we can move those students to the uh, middle school buildings without needing to invest any dollars in remodeling or expansion construction. So again, this information is just looking at Smart Sudlow Williams Wood. The capacity and enrollment information is using 22-23 school year data. Buffalo, Bluegrass, and Walcott are not being illustrated because we are not looking at changing that scenario at this time. So we have a uh, top bar of minimum, bottom bar of maximum. The projected enrollment for each building includes the uh, building with, with the addition of the sixth graders. And so we are looking at uh, comparison to the minimum capacity and the maximum. And we are still working within uh, capacity for those buildings, which tells us that the sixth graders can move without needing to expand those buildings. And that will now free up space within the elementary buildings uh, starting at the 24-25 school year. So how do we start planning for this change? So this part, I might need a little help from some of the cabinet members, but this is a process that's already begun with district leadership cabinet and the building principals. There's been some uh, significant planning sessions uh, beginning to dig deep into the process of how do we construct a transition plan, understanding that transition plan is uh, affecting multiple levels, meaning students, their families, and the staff that works in the buildings. So the first and Foremost thing is this planning group has looked at the boundary study as it sits to date and put their comment in to help influence uh, considerations of how those boundaries might be received or, or could be drawn. So that has uh, been an in, in integral part of the boundary planning. Also, planning for transition, it's been identified that a, a a uh, transition plan will need to include a communication plan for students and their families and staff. And this will need to be an ongoing communication plan, not just a one-time announcement, but uh, a regular communication that provides the opportunity for students and families and the staff in the buildings to understand the change that's occurring to them, as well <clears throat> as, well as a communication plan to the buildings receiving the students so that those buildings are also aware and understanding the change that is happening. Opportunities for tours at the buildings where students and their families will be attending, as well as orientation programs. Again, not just a one-time, but a series of events which will welcome those new students and families into the buildings will help create more understanding and awareness of the change uh, and how it impacts them and create familiarity with the staff in the buildings, uh, the staff in the layout and, and flow of the buildings that they will be moving to. Providing counseling opportunities for the students and their families will also be an opportunity to help them uh, work through issues and problems with uh, the changes being uh, put upon them. At the new buildings, it was suggested that the Buildings receiving new students should include uh, uh, students and their families as well as staff to current events during this 22-23 school year. It provides an opportunity to welcome those new families in 
and start the process of making them feel welcome into the events and uh, activities that occur in those buildings. There will need to be staff development sessions because uh, staff will be retained and will need to be uh, integrated into those buildings that they'll be moving to, and so that will take additional staff work. And then another important thing that was uh, discussed is creating closure at the existing buildings, commemorating that through uh, ceremony and assembly uh, to, to commemorate the, the closing of those buildings before they are gone from the district. So what does this mean for staffing and what do the buildings need for support? Staffing. As stated, staff needs to be utilized at all buildings. Staff will be retained. It's noted that Washington, Monroe, and Buchanan currently have 67 teachers between the buildings. On an annual basis, the, the district has about 100 positions open annually. All staff will be utilized through the transition project process. Through natural attrition, efficiencies will be realized as the district moves, moves forward. More information on this as we jump ahead in this presentation. Supports. Again, part of this planning with the leadership cabinet and the principals, centering around transitioning, really relies on what do the buildings need to function in this new environment understanding that we're gonna grow the number of sections in each building because we're now increasing the size from a population standpoint at each building. There will be administrative needs. Uh, additional administrators will need to be identified and uh, uh, better described through this process. There will need to be support for behavior programs in each building. Special education has a multitude of factors that will have an important effect on each building and specific planning will need to be held to understand the, the roles and staff that is needed to handle the special education needs. Counselors will need support because again, the enrolled number of students in each building grows, which means there will be extra burden on the uh, staff that's in uh, the buildings providing counseling. Staff retention and hiring are a critical concern and the planning group wanted to identify that planning this out correctly and adequately will help both in the field of retaining current employees and in the ability to hire new ones to fill the needs that the district has. Once these district changes have happened, the buildings will be able to better understand how to consider space needs and remodeling needs in each building. It is a little bit difficult at this point in time, and so through the process of transition, it will help that building staff better understand if there are long-term needs for expansion, remodeling, or change in the building physically to support the programming that's happening in the building from an education standpoint. Teacher compensation was a concern that was brought up at the uh, planning sessions and it is uh, more of the consideration of understanding that compensation still has a direct impact on retention and hiring for the district and uh, keeping that in mind as, as the district plans out changes through these transition plans. Also the ability to utilize AEA staff in the buildings will change and grow uh, in need as the enrolled number of students grows in each building. From a cost and expense standpoint, there are a couple different buckets, as we know, where money comes from. Some are related to staff and salaries and, and uh, products and materials. Others are uh, physical and constructive and, and uh, other costs. So in the general fund sense, there will be an estimated impact to busing, which affects the drivers and routes. We are not quite there yet to understand if this is a uh, no change, an increase or a de decrease. That information will follow as this boundary study uh, wraps up. There will be operational efficiencies that will occur through staff attrition. There will be up to 14 reductions in teaching staff that will have an impact of up to or over a million dollars. 
There will be three reductions in the field of secretaries that will have an impact of uh, approximately $160,000. There will be eight custodian reductions with a net impact of approximately 430,000. Administrators, three positions at approximately $350,000. It is unforeseen that there will be any para or FNS reductions, and this is due to current understaffing. But this does yield an annual estimated savings of well over a million dollars. So that is real cost impact to the district. That may be uh, offset a little bit by any busing impact, but is still a, a large number. When we look at uh, physical costs, so putting that into the bucket of save and pepple, again, that busing impact uh, the vehicles come out of the, the save pepple bucket. So uh, there may be an impact in the number of vehicles, either more or less needed for the busing routes. There is an annualized operational savings at each building. Through the closure of the three buildings, the district will save annually at Buchanan a cost of $184,588. If you uh, realize this cost over 20 years, which is typically the life of a bond in a district, that is $3.7 million. Monroe will ye yield an annual savings of approximately $219,000, which looking at that over a 20 year period is $4.3 million. Washington will uh, yield an annualized savings of $213,000, which uh, projecting out over 20 years is $4.2 million. The district is also facing deferred maintenance costs. Uh, when we reviewed each building in the district, we provided a facility study to the board for consideration. That has had a cost attributed to it. So every item in that facility study has been estimated. That is a cost that doesn't necessarily require that the district write a check and handle it all at once but it is a cost that has to be incurred at some point to deal with the general upkeep and maintenance of the buildings. Buchanan has a current projected expense of $2.1 million. Monroe is $11.57 million, and Washington is $9 million. By removing these buildings from the logs of the district, you will be able to take monies and redistribute them to other buildings in need in the district. So this becomes an expense that you don't have to pay. And again, this is not that you have to pay this cost in one lump sum right now, but it is a, an expense that the district is facing. It is a, a large effort to have to come back to each building in the district and expend money just to get them uh, repaired and, and uh, to deal with any deferred or necessary maintenance. So removing buildings is a savings that is realized. So that's a lot of information. I've kind of tried to not move through it too fast, but I'm sure there's a lot of questions or, or items that you might need clarified. So I'll open it up to the board. Director Hayes. Thank you so much for your time with that. Could we go back to slide number 10 where um, Williams was left off. Can you give an approximate estimate of how those schools would be divided? Sorry, I, I'm not sure what happened there. There's, it's three elementaries for each four, uh, each of the, excuse me, three elementaries for each middle school building. I probably have a graphic here that I think I caught something that was in the uh, midstream of being developed. Sorry. This mouse just decided to take over. We can definitely, yeah. we can definitely get you the updated part. I'll mark that down. Thank you.
Hang on one second. Go right ahead. I just want to briefly uh, say that I appreciate your consideration for uh, the high schools. Um, I think, uh, I just think that's a really important part of the conversation and I appreciate it on behalf of all the high school students. Excellent, thank you. Hang on one second, Director Klein. Oh. All right, go ahead, Jackson. <clears throat> just wanted to say this was um, quite quite fascinating. Um, I, I, can, I can tell that a lot of time, effort, and thoughtful consideration was put into this. Um, it was very succinct, very. Um, very well um, reasoned, like it's, it's very very grounded in reality. Um, and from some of the from some of the things I heard and read throughout that, I feel like we may have some very happy people tonight. Thank you, Director Klein, Jerome. Um, a couple things. I, I noticed that Jackson is two hundred under um, their capacity whereas Wilson is only 13. And I know you've said that there is a possibility of going to four schools. It seems like Monroe shifting some of that to Jackson, they seem to have a lot of space. Is that a consideration? Surprisingly, both that and potentially from the Truman area. So coming from both ways to help fill Jackson is being studied right now. Okay, um, the other thing is teacher compensation. Um, money certainly for, for retention, but if you are a teacher in Washington, Monroe, Buchanan, you're going to have to pack up all your stuff and move. So are we also talking time compensation to give them at the end of the year time to pack up and have their stuff move? Because I'll tell you, someone who's gone from building before, it, it's very time consuming. That's actually a really good point. I'm not sure if that part came up in, in the planning. Thank you. Director Poshton. <clears throat> well, as I've mentioned in previous meetings, I'm still concerned about the move of the sixth graders to um, the intermediate schools and waiting until 2024. I still believe that they should be moved um, at the beginning of the 2023 school district. I'm concerned about enough room in the elementaries. I have sat in on reading interventionists um, in different buildings, and they are basically, uh, in, in some cases, working in a closet. Um, one building that I was at, uh, the only place I had to sit in that room to watch the reading interventions <coughs> in the interventionist was on the heater. Um, so my con <coughs> my concern is that we don't have enough area for our interventionist, our special ed students. Um, and we made this move uh, back in, <clears throat> when they went from the junior high to the elementary, we voted on that in the spring and those students were moved in the fall. And I don't see why we can't do that now. I think we'll <clears throat> it would also help us with our planning down the road because there will be more <clears throat> building closures. And by getting these students and getting our boundaries all set at that one time, then we can be able to uh, afford better planning uh, down the road. By waiting to 2024, again, we're doing what previous boards have done and we're just kicking the can down the road. Um, again, I, I think it needs to be done by fall um, and then we move on from there. If you look at the timeline, from August of 2023 to August of 2024, Nothing is happening. Director Gordon. Um, yeah, I just had a question about on slide six. Um, the third point says that Fillmore, Harrison, and Truman are more closely aligned with primary access routes, which provide better accessibility for students, families, and buses. Um, 
I guess I'm a little curious about that data because all three of the other schools that you've discussed closing are also on primary access routes and in heavily populized neighborhoods. So what, how was that, how did that come about? So it's a, a difficult choice between when looking at the buildings in the northwestern portion of the city, having four buildings to, to work through, um, a lot of question comes up as to, uh, you know, what drives you towards uh, selecting Buchanan over uh, Fillmore, Harrison, Truman. So it is only a conversation about that region itself, not the other regions that you're looking at. Um, it is a different set of criteria that comes into play when looking at um, Monroe and Washington. So it, it, it isn't really an apples to apples comparison. Okay. Are there any other questions? Director Potts, you got anything? Um, uh, Director Kleindrom kind of touched on it. So the uh, the teacher compensation. I realize we employ teachers, but we have other staff too, and they always get forgotten about. We only talk about administrators and teachers. We have paras, custodians, and everything else, um, secretaries, and all that. So when you all are talking about that stuff, it would be nice if you mentioned those folks too, because I mean we couldn't operate if we didn't have the support staff. And I think all too often they get overlooked. And my other question is how are, and this is probably a cabinet question, but how are the meetings going with the principals on uh, these transition plans and things like that? Because a few times at some meetings we've had staff members from buildings that would be receiving kiddos and they don't seem very receptive to it. And I would think that if we're, uh, going to be working on things like that. I'm hoping that stuff gets worked out um, because it shouldn't be, well, we don't want those kids or whatever it should be. What are we going to do to support those kids when they come in the building? Because we're putting the wrong message out. And this is the part where it starts becoming doggy dog and everybody, you know, wants to politic and advocate for their school while shooting the other ones down. And I don't think that that's uh, fair at all. So I was just curious how those meetings are going. We had a very productive meeting with all of our head administrators last week. We shared the boundaries. We uh, <clears throat> we started off with some key assumptions um, that we would be keeping all of our staff, that we would be um, and doing all of those uh, adjustments through attrition, and they really did an excellent job. That brainstorm list is from our administrators who are every day working with our teachers, paras, secretaries, custodial maintenance bus drivers. Uh, so that brainstorm list came from there. Uh, one of the things that we battle in this process is that we, in a district our size, the board needs certain information first. And so in order for you guys to have that information first to discuss and talk about, give us our marching orders, sometimes that information comes afterwards. So during this stretch of this phase, our employees are hearing the information at the same time the board is. So it's a very natural reaction for them to to reach out to school board members. So far, the board members are forwarding that, those concerns, we're gathering them, we're looking for ways that we can tweak so that feedback is being received, it's being welcomed, and we appreciate it. So as we move forward, the board will give us our charge to change the boundaries, to do the things that we need to do to make the transitions, and we will follow our normal path of communication, which is when, say, for example, if we're sending an email, that email will go to the board, it will go to uh, the administration, then it will go to every employee in the district. And we're also trying to utilize a video message at the end of the month um, from, our, from my office to kind of help communicate um, and, and we're definitely trending in the right direction with that communication. But that's the, that's the difficult part that we run into is that we want you guys to have that information first. As if we were to put that in, cascade that information before you got it, it would come to you. 
in a in a in a fashion via the telephone game. So um, we're very excited to to really put the best plan in place for our for our employees. We feel a sense of urgency. The people sitting over there and and our building administrators, we feel a sense of urgency to get that right. Um, we've all had our uh, jobs adjusted in some way and and that's a very unsettling thing so it's it's something that is um heavy on our our minds and hearts as we move forward to this next phase this is not easy um and i i'm going to use the phrase that we say all the time that this this is not this board's is this board is not responsible for this but it is our responsibility to move forward to be better than we are now and and i believe that this is a a good option to set the stage forward when when bray begins to put some of the plans in place to where you can see the drawings that are coming for davenport north when you can when you can envision um wonderful practice facilities competition facilities classrooms that actually fit uh fit our students um what what re-envisioning the middle school whether it whatever the pace is going to be the feedback from our community is overwhelming that our middle schools need to change and it's going to be bumpy and it's going to be rough and we're going to do everything we can to to lessen that bumpy road so to speak so that i would say that that's a long way around to answer your question sorry dan but we're trying to, to not get out ahead of the board with information to the community and i would say once the decision is made we're going to be able to directly communicate with our employees and if if I could follow up, the tone was very well set by Superintendent Schneckloth by reminding everyone that we're one district. We're not individual buildings fighting against one another. We're not individual neighborhoods striving to compete against one another. We have to think of this as one district first. If the district can come together and succeed then all of the buildings within it will succeed as well. And it's not gonna happen unless the, the district as a whole and the community as a whole embraces this and works together to get through this change. Director Kleintra. Um, and this is for TJ and Jamie. Um, how soon will a plan be put together for how staff of those closed buildings are going to be placed or be able to my term bid in because there's nothing worse than a vote happens and then they sit for a month or two not knowing that no man's land sure so over the last year we worked with the different bargaining groups on different transfer language um, and then we have some language in there for situations like this and so we are engaging with each of those groups on what's the process, then the plan will be going to communicate, especially to each one of the buildings that are impacted, what that plan is, and then setting the timeline as far as the dates that the plan will start taking place. And it's our my intent to have it wrapped up within a week so everybody knows where they're going for the next school year. So by the end of December, when they leave for winter break, they will know what the plan is at least? Yes. Okay. And I apologize if I left any groups out earlier when I said, but we should take into account all of our groups that work for us. Um, one last thing, I want to thank everyone that's uh, put this together. Um, not only do you got to do your normal jobs, uh, especially running, we're the, the third or fourth largest district in the state or something like that, and then we're asking you to do this stuff on top of that. So um, thank you to everyone that's helped out with that. Uh, Director Passion. Just one last question then. I, I guess I'd like from the administration uh, reasoning why we cannot move the sixth graders um, by the fall. So we can do anything we want. Um, so I wanna preface with that. It was the recommendation of the facility master planning committee um, and the people that we talked to that were impacted by this, that we really need to reimagine what does the middle school look like. 
And we've put together a task team that is going to be re-envisioning that. And so the, the thought process behind it would be is that we are in our minimum to maximum, we are in our ranges with the, with the students going back to the buildings. So the, the buildings can handle those, those populations from a population standpoint, from an enrollment standpoint for, for a year. And then that would allow us the time to do any minor construction that we have, any setup, any hiring of teachers that we would need to do to, to operate a true middle school model, which we have done in the past. That's the logic. If the board chooses not to do that and move sooner, then, then an alternate plan would have to be made. And we, I, we will accomplish it. Whatever the board wants us to do, we will accomplish it. Whether it be strategically planned for a year, or drop everything and do this plan. I, I don't want there to be any hurdles to any decision that you have to make. Um, that is just the, the recommendation. If we push it back by a year, we're also pushing back having any pre-K in any in some of our uh, elementaries, and that concerns me too. We need we need to get going on the pre-K because again, it's going to be the number one thing that's going to help us with early literacy, and so we're delaying that by a year too. If we delay delay um, moving the sixth graders, so I think it's. I think we need to be more urgent and I have complete um, confidence in your staff that it can be accomplished. And um, in my mind, that's the way we should move forward. Anyone else? Superintendent Schneider. I just want to clarify only one slide um, where we where we were talking about potential reductions um, that we are going we need all of our staff members during this transition so I want to be crystal clear that we our plans are to retain our staffs during this transition and utilize it through through attrition um, which we know we have people that move to town, people that graduate from Palmer that we, and people that are transferred from Deer. We have those, those ish instances in our district. So this is going to be critical. The stat, the staff movement in our district is we, we have done this before. We have, we have some past practices. We're fully prepared to work with all of the unions on making sure that we're following all of those past practices that, that have worked for us. Um, it, Sometimes there is a domino effect with that. We just have to be cognizant of that. And so, um, so that we're very committed to that. And, and I know that, that it's going to be necessary for us. Um, there's a national shortage on employees, period. So for, I want our employees to know that they're incredibly important during this time. And I don't want anybody to confuse that, that reduction being something that's happening right away. One of the most exciting things about this time is the ability to re reset the district standard. And so when I look over at the, the team over here that's leading this work, we have an opportunity to reset our at-risk program. We have an opportunity to reset our literacy. We have an opportunity to reset what do middle schools look like. And that's, what, that's what's facing us. Um, and, and it's an incredible opportunity and it's a privilege to be in the spot to do that. And I see, when I look over there, I'm pointing to the people that are leading those task teams and, and while we're going through this journey to get that right is what I've heard over and over, get that right. If we're going to do this, make sure that this is right. So, um, th this is an opportunity for us to be, um, growing excellence in our district. So finish with that. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Appreciate the presentation. Uh, we'll move on to communications. Open forum. Open forum is a time for members of the community to give input at a board meeting. 
Regarding school district issues or concerns, individuals who want to speak, please fill out an open forum request and give it to the board secretary prior to open forum. The form is available in hard copy for in-person attendees or on the school board page of the district's website for those who want to participate virtually. Virtual participants must email their request to Brenda T. at tbren at davenportschools.org by 3 p.m. on the day of the meeting. The board will not act on any issue presented during open forum if it was not published as an agenda item. Iowa Open Meetings Law prohibits action on any issue that is not an agenda item. The president may set the amount of time allowed for individuals to speak. The board asks that no charges or complaints be made against individual employees of the district or community. Remarks that reflect negatively on the character or motives of any person will be called out of order. Do we have any virtual ones, Brenda? And we only have one for tonight. Uh, two minutes, and we have Ruth Gallagher. Uh, when you come up to the microphone, just state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, Ruth Ann Gallagher, 2049 West First Street, Davenport, Iowa. Um, I understand that you have to make some decisions in terms of economics. Monroe right now has 384 children. A lot of those children walk to school. What really concerns me is you're going to take those 384 children, disperse them to three different schools. A lot of them are not going to get to school in the wintertime. They just aren't. And I know it's very difficult. You showed me $11 million to fix Monroe, so I assume then somebody's going to have to tear that down. I live in the neighborhood. What's going to happen to the school? Um, so my question is, do we know how many kids walk to Monroe School every day of those 384 children? Because that's a consideration. I know that's a different than looking at dollars and cents. Um, also, could you slow down the process? I live in the neighborhood. I have neighbors who live, have kids at the school. No one's come down, as far as I've been told a week or two ago, to talk to the parents at the school and to talk to the neighbors at the school. So if someone could come down and explain to us what's going on, we would appreciate that. And finally, um, if possible, could you cut Monroe in half and still have it as a school for those kids who walk to school? Because that really concerns me that we're just going to have more poverty, more problems, because these kids are not going to get to school. They're going to end up dropping out. And it's a poor area. I've lived there for 40 years. So, But I appreciate all the work you do. I know no one gets paid to be on the school board, so I appreciate your hard work. And Bruce, I think you were the principal at SMART for years. Congratulations. You did a great job down there. We appreciate it still. Thank you. Thank you. All right, may I have a motion on the consent agenda? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board accept the consent agenda as written. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Klein Jerome. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Poston? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on approval of bills? Mr. President. Director Poston. Move the board approve the following resolution. Resolved all claims presented to the board having been tr duly certified as correct by the treasurer, reviewed by the administration and board members. And they are hereby audited and allowed as just claims or warrants drawn on the treasury for the several amounts. For the resolve, the payment of claims and salaries be approved as presented for the periods of 11 9 to 11 11 22. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Klein Jerome. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Poston? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Gordon. What are we voting on? <laughs> Approval of bills. Oh, yes. Thank you. My vote is yes. Motion carries. 
Superintendent report. I have two things to report. First thing, um, we had our, a presentation at the state school board uh, before the, the ISB convention. The, it allowed us to tell our story, where we've been, where we're going, and it was an over, overwhelmingly positive um, situation. Um, the, the, the intent in the room um, and the vibes in the room were very positive toward Davenport schools. I'd like to highlight at the very end of it, the state's, state's attorney, uh, Thomas Mays, proud graduate of Davenport North. Um, he had said that when he was at his job alikes at the federal level, very few school districts come out of uh, the position that we were in. They're, they're, they're overwhelmingly dissolved. And so potentially going to be, he said, some kind of case study or research done on the efforts that were done in Davenport. And I, I would put a lot of that to the school board. On the heels of that, um, we, the school board was asked to present at the Iowa Association of School Boards on our journey. And it was a, a pretty full um, room. And it, we got to tell our story again. And it, it, it reminds me uh, how important it is to reflect on where you've been. And it was, it, was an over, it was an overwhelmingly positive experience for us putting that together because the title of the presentation was Forged in Fire. And I think some of the things that we are doing are, are going to outlast anybody sitting at this table. For example, the way our finances are trending, the way that we're, we're, we're setting our district up on a, on a course for um, financial success, prog programmatic success. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about the spot that we're in, even though we are, it is very difficult right now. We have difficult decisions to make. This board is committed to making decisions and, and owning up to the responsibility that it comes to. So those are those were two very positive things that occurred before Thanksgiving break. Thank you. Committee reports. Uh, do you have anything for the data wall? Not at this time. All right. Uh, finance committee. Nothing. Long range facilities. Okay. I wasn't there either. I was in Des Moines. Uh, Elziak. Policy. Nothing. All right. Uh, legislative advocacy is the same as uh, the last meeting. So, all right. We'll move on to items requiring action. May I have a motion on subject 11.01? .01? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board adopt the Davenport, the Davenport Board and Superintendent long-term goals as presented. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Klein, Jerome. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein, Jerome? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Postion? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.02? Mr. President. Director Gordon. I move that the board recommend approving a contract with Scott County DCAT Restorative Justice Program in the amount of $50,000 for school-based mediation services in effect from January 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2023. This contract will be funded by ESSER funds. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Klein, Jerome? Yes. Director Postion? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.03? Director Hayes. I move the board approve the purchase of furniture from Office Specialists, a division of ABS Advanced Business Systems for High School Computer Lab Furniture Replacement Project at Central High School for $60,789.36, North High School for $59,076.40. 
42 cents and West High School for $57,030 and 24 cents. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Paz. Any discussion? Jackson? I just uh, want to make a quick point. This has actually been quite talked about at West. Uh, people are very, very excited about this. I'm pretty sure I know how you guys are going to vote on it, and I will. there will be a lot of happy people tomorrow. Thank you. Um, my only question is, is there a reason there are three, all three put out specifically, or if we did all three together, do we get a better deal? Or you just had to do it that way? It, it's just typically how we do it. So we separate expenses out per building. Okay. Um, all of the all the suppliers got all the same um, okay. RFPs. So probably different colors for different schools. I get a it. little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Uh, Director Hayes. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Gordon. Yes. Director Postion. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.04? Mr. President. Director Klein Jerome. I move the board approve the purchase of cafe tables from Valued Inspired Products and Services VIPS as part of the cafe tables replacement project at Adams for $41,585 and McKinley for $26,225. Second. All right. Is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Postion? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.05? Mr. President. Director Postion? Move the board approve the contract with IMEG Eng Engineering for design of the 2023 West High HVAC upgrades ESSER project in the amount of $565,000. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this? The only thing I want to say, I want to reemphasize, I don't want to see line ducks because it's fiberglass blowing on people every time that system kicks on. Um, any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Director Postion? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Uh, we'll move on to discussion items. Up first, we have subject 12.01, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Mississippi Valley 1 to 1 Mentoring Alternative to Superintendent. All right, good evening. So this is a partnership that's being recommended with Big Brothers and Big Sisters of the Mississippi Valley region to increase our one-to-one -one mentoring services within our school district. So pre-pandemic, Big Brothers and Big Sisters were serving about 221 of our students, and they're currently serving 155 students. So this partnership would enhance their ability to reach more of our students. So the goal of this partnership is to create a streamlined identification, referral, and engagement process within our school district to assist leadership and staff in providing social-emotional supports to our students. The goal would be to target six elementary schools. Within this partnership, they would enhance their capacity um, to create a match enrollment coordinator position who would work directly with us to create those matches between mentors and students and a community engagement coordinator who would coordinate the efforts to make sure that we have the right mentors in our buildings working with students. Um, their one-to-one -one mentoring um, resource, when a student gets matched, they are matched for an average of three and a half years, which is really exciting to have that consistent relationship with an adult. Um, and so that's what this request is about. Any questions? Director Klein Jerome. I do have one question. Is this from now to the end of the school year or is this for an entire year starting now or what are the dates on 
Yeah. So the go- yep, great question. The goal would be for one calendar year, so till next December, if it would were to get approved. Okay. And their hope is that they'd be able to match eighty students within that time frame. Additional students, I should say. Why then is it the year in final invoicing must be submitted by June fifteenth, twenty twenty three, if we're going through December? There's always lagging invoices for services, and that is June of 2023 is because of our ESSER funds ending. It's funded by ESSER, so we're making sure that we have every single invoice so we have everything okay. accounted for. Any other questions? Knocked it out of the park, Courtney. Um, does the board need any other information to vote on this? It would be the 12th, correct? All right. Uh, next discussion item is 12.02 policies for the board's second discussion. Is there any questions on that? All right. We'll. Director Posh. So under um, policy 502.07, smoking, drinking, drugs, when I read through that, does that include vaping? Okay, and at presently, what are we doing with this policy as far as uh, what are we doing to enforce this in our schools? So we work through um, all of our major minor offenses. We have discussed this with all of our administrators. And so what we're doing with this policy is we're following the majors and minors. What should we suspend for? What should we move past suspension for? And so we, we have some protocols that we are um, utilizing for this. What are we expelling for? What are we... Um, so, so depending upon the, 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 the number of offenses, this, this, the seriousness of it, we, we, we kind of go through it that way. But it's a, it's, it's a very structured process that is communicated all throughout the district. So, so has there been any discipline um, recently as far as uh, vaping? Yes. Can you tell tell us uh, how many people this is involved? Or? I would be happy to tell you that. I can get that in a private okay. report if you like. It, it might, uh, just for clarification, maybe that should be in the policy along as far as putting, yeah, the vaping. I think he's talking about in the name of it, where it says yeah. smoking, drinking, drugs, and put vaping. Director Kleindrum, you took note of that, right? Jackson, you had a question. I was just wondering, um, when he brought it up, I pulled it up myself. It had mentioned um, students that are caught um, doing any of those three things that there'd be a rehabilitation uh program is that just like a referral or is it is that within the school like like kind of how, how does that kind of whole work thing work? It, all, it all depends so sometimes we require it for a re-entry sometimes it's so it all depends on the situation to apply a one-size-fits-all to to every situation wouldn't is what we're trying to get away from and what got us in the spot of being disproportionate. Our number one goal is to always teach somebody. Um, once, once you've taught one, the repetitiveness, that's where the consequences become steeper. Um, and so that's kind of the direction that we utilize for that. And yes, it's an outside agency. All right, seeing no more discussion, this will be on the agenda to vote on on the 12th, I believe. Uh, administrative reports. Not this time. Board request. 
All right, we got one board request, name of board member, Director Gordon, date of request, November 28, 2022. Item requested a request for information. Description of request, I would like to see data on CT, CTTS, specifically whether weekly meetings are proven to create better outcomes for student learning, teacher efficiency, or whether bi-monthly or monthly CTs may have a similar outcome. Why are you making this request? I am concerned about staff burnout and also how staff shortages, which are exacerbated by mandatory meetings during the school day affect student learning. When would you like this as soon as possible? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Potts. All right, uh, board reflections. Director Gordon, you wanna start? Yeah, I just wanna uh, thank John and Bright Architects for the information tonight. We've got a lot of work ahead of us next week, but I think that with the information provided, um, we'll be able to have a fruitful discussion. Thank you, Director Potts. I would say that for me, that's the Lone Range Facility Plan presentation. A lot of work, a lot of work to do, a lot of decisions that we have to make, but we're getting, I think, good concrete data on which to base those decisions. And I think we're also showing the public that we're, we're listening to the feedback that we're getting. Thank you. Director Hayes. Again, I too enjoyed the Lone Range facility planning presentation, as everyone else has said. But I would also like to add that I enjoy the student's perspective. Jackson is very enthusiastic with all his comments. And Landon, you know, he always has something to add. Even if he has to leave, you know, he has his say and go. So I appreciate your participation, asking questions and giving your feedback from your perspective schools. Thank you, uh, Director Kleindrum. Um, and this just falls under the consent agenda and so just goes on over, but I appreciate the fact that we hired four certified staff and eight classified staff since we do have a shortage and we still are out there recruiting and trying to hire and, and fill those gaps. So um, I appreciate that. I thought the long range facility plan was also um, a good presentation and discussion tonight. Thank you, Director Postion. I'd just like to thank everyone that's worked so hard on the long range facilities planning, Bruce and Dan, um, the architects. Um, this has been a long road and a lot of people have been involved in it. We still have a lot of tough decisions to make, but uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. Thank you. Jackson, you got any reflections? Nah, uh, I mean, y'all y'all kind of said what I would have said, that uh, long-range facilities planning, uh, you know, I kind of already said my comments on it, but seriously, that was, um, I, I, I'm very glad that it wasn't just kind of like, here's schools that are old and we can save money and that's it. There was a lot of data, you know, ob obviously, Clavica School closes, unfortunate, but um I, I don't really see a whole lot minus um, I know there's one concern brought up in an open forum that I, I think is a fair concern, but, but for the most part, I think pretty much every concern one could have with this plan was addressed in that, um, in that presentation, I guess <clears throat> maybe, maybe other than busing, I guess if that might with all the, with all the money and all that, maybe how that would change busing to different places. But yeah, that, that was fantastic. And, uh, I don't know, uh, yay, new computer labs. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Schneckloff. I can see this time where our students are receiving new beautiful classrooms. The pathway is clear and it was highlighted tonight by our two students who said, wow, that, that sounds amazing. And 
And so that's that that was the highlight for me because that's that's the direction that I believe we're all envisioning through this through the tough time here, through the rough time that we're going through. So that was the highlight. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty much the same. I thought it was a good presentation. I'm glad that we have had all the community input and things like that, whether people are kind of getting late to the dance on coming to some of this stuff. Um, but it's been nice having that. And I also appreciate our student board members coming uh, to the board meetings and giving us the input from the students. So, and I appreciate all of my fellow board members for uh, their willingness to do the hard things that we're gonna have to do. Uh, as Director Poshin said earlier, sometimes things were kicked down the road. Um, before I ask for a motion to adjourn, when we adjourn this meeting, we're gonna take a five minute break and then we have to do the annual meeting and then we'll adjourn that one and then we'll do the organizational meeting and then we'll be done for the night. So that's three meetings tonight. But as soon as we're done with this one, we'll take a five minute break so everyone can uh, use the restrooms or whatever and then we'll get back after it. So with that, Director Potts, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it, meeting adjourned.
All right, I now call the annual meeting to order. Are there any annual meeting reports? Nope, all right. Annual meeting items requiring action. May I have a motion? Or do you gotta come up and read this stuff to us first? No, okay. May I have a motion on subject 19.01, the annual settlement report? Ms. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve the annual settlement report as presented. Is there a second? Seconded by Director Potts. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Pondrome? Yes. Director Postrum? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 19.02? Mr. President. Director Postum. Move the board approve the following annual resolution for the payment of bills. Be it resolved that in between regularly scheduled board meetings that after the bills have been reviewed by the board and verified by the administration, board treasurer, and superintendent, the board president may be authorized to approve payment of claims and warrants drawn on the treasury for the several amounts, including payment of claims and salaries. Be it further resolved, the board will officially approve these warrants at the next regular board meeting, and the warrants will be entered in the minutes of record. Thank you. Is there a second? Seconded by Director Kleindrome. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Postion? Yes. Director Kleindrom? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 19.03? Mr. President? Director Postion? Move the board adopt the following resolution resolved by the board of directors of the Davenport Community School District in the counties of Scott and Muscatine, state of Iowa, that the following named financial institutions are hereby designated as depositories of funds for said school district in the amounts not to exceed the amounts here and after set forth, and the school district's treasurer is hereby authorized to de deposit the Davenport Community School District's funds and the amount not to exceed named for said financial institutions as presented. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Director Posh. Um, probably need to do a name change here. Uh, Walk at Trust and Savings Bank is now CBI Bank. Um, that, that, that was sold to CBI Bank. Are we good to, with him making that so that is with the change? Okay. Is there any other discussion? Yeah. Was he talking about First Midwest? Because that's now Old National. Sorry. Not all of those are sold. They're, they're part of them were sold off, but your point is right. I think we need to put kind of a slash first national or first national slash. What's that? Old, Old national. Sorry. Old. <laughs> Bruce is talking about uh, first Midwest bank is now called Old National Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Pass that over here. <laughs> Kevin said to, how did you say to put that, Kevin, to slash? Put a, put a slash so we have both of them listed on the same line. Did you get that, Brenda? And then did you get what Director Postion brought up as well? Okay. Is there any other corrections or additions? All right, so 
we're going to vote on this as it's been amended. Correct? All right. Director Poshton. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Klein, Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Be or Gordon. Yes. Thank you. Or my vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 19.04? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve the legal services of Lane and Waterman LLP to represent the corporation and advise the board until the board's annual meeting in 2023. Second. Second by Director Potts. Is there any discussion on this? The only question I have, and I think I asked this last year, do we have to do Ehlers and Cooney too? Because you guys utilize them. And we utilize them for negotiations. Because in the in years past, we used to vote on both, I do believe, right? Lane and Waterman and Ehlers and Cooney. As long as you say we don't have to. I do not believe we have to. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Poshton? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I? Oh, I got to actually do. And may I have a motion to adjourn the annual meeting? Mr. President? Director Potts? I move we adjourn the annual meeting. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this? I'm guessing not. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Potts? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Poston? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. <clears throat> um, now call, call the order the organizational meeting. All right, the first item is to nominate the nomination of a chairperson. Mr. President. Director Poston. Move the board nominate Brenda T. Board Secretary to serve as temporary chair for the election of officers. No second required. Ms. T, I will turn it over to you. Do you want the gavel and all the good stuff with it? No. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to quickly explain the voting process. Um, if there's more than one nomination, the board automatically casts their votes for president and vice president by a signed written ballot. We would use the Roman system, which I can explain if that becomes an issue. If there's only one nomination, um, I will ask the question of each of you if you're willing to cast your vote by a roll call vote, a verbal, or if you want to use a written ballot. If there's no consensus, um, it will default to written. So if you'll answer roll call or written according to your desires. Director Poston, do you want to use a roll call or a written vote? Roll call. Director Gosa? Ditto. Roll call? Is that what you said? Yeah, roll call. Okay. Uh, Director Klein Jerome? Roll call. Director Hayes? Roll call. Director Gordon? Roll call. And Director Potts? Therefore, if we have only one nomination, we have we will have consensus by roll call. Um, we will start with the election of the president. May I? And just a reminder: there's no second necessary on nominations. So, may I have a nomination for the office of president? Madam Chairman, uh, Director Potts. I'd like to nominate Dan Gosa. Director Gosa, do you accept the nomination? I accept. Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? Hearing no more nominations, uh, nominations are declared closed. Um, since there's only one person nominated, is it your wish um, to elect Dan Gosa as president? When I call your name, please verbally answer me yes or no. Director Postgen? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Gosa? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein-Jerome? Yes. 
I therefore declare Daniel Gosa president of the Davenport School Board until November 2023. All right, we're going to move on to election of vice president. Same rules. Uh, may I have a nomination for the office of vice president? Madam Chair. Yes. I would like to nominate Director Klein Jerome as vice president. Uh, Director Klein Jerome, do you accept the nomination? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Vice President? Hearing no further nominations, the nominations are declared closed. Since there's only one person nominated, um, please answer yes or no if it's your wish to elect Karen Klein Jerome as Vice President. Director Postian? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Gosa? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. I therefore de declare Karen Klein Jerome Vice President of the Davenport School Board until November 2023. I will now give the oath of office to both the President and Vice President. President Gosa, will you please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I, Daniel Gosa. I, Daniel Gosa. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the Office of School Board President. Of the Office of School Board President. In the Davenport Community School District in the Davenport Community School District. As now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Thank you. And I will have you sign that oath at the end of the meeting. Vice President Klein Jerome, will you please stand, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Karen Klein Jerome. I, Karen Klein Jerome. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the Office of School Board Vice President of the Office of School Board Vice President in the Davenport Community School District in the Davenport Community School District as now or hereafter required by law as here and now after as, as now required, or hereafter required by law thank you I'll have you sign your oath at the end of the meeting too and I'm turning it back over to President Gosa Thank you. Um, subject 22.06, uh, board standing committees. Um, the agenda committee consists of the president, vice president, superintendent. The finance committee current members are Director Klein Jerome and Director Postian. The legislative committee current members are Director Postian and Director Gosa. Long or LZAC current members are Director Gordon and Director Beck. Uh, Long Range Facilities Planning com current members are Director Potts and Director Gosa. Policy Committee um, is Director Beck, Director Gosa, and Director Klein Jerome. If anyone would like to uh, be on any committees or anything else, uh, let me know. Shoot me or shoot Brenda an email. We'll check into that and I'll have to get back to you. I don't, <laughs> like we're the only district that really does student board members, so we'll see what we can do. You can talk to me after the meeting. Gladly. All right. Um, items requiring action. May I have a motion on subject 23.01, approved board meeting calendar? Mr. President. Director Potts. I move the bo board approve the board meeting calendar for meetings scheduled December 2022 through November 2023 as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Klein Jerome. Is there any, dis any discussion? 
Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Potts? Yes. Director klein -Jerome. Yes. Director Postion? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 23.02, changes the board agenda structure? Mr. President. Director klein -Jerome. I move the following changes be made to future regular meeting ad agendas. Approval of bills will be moved to the consent agenda and voting on routine matters will be accomplished through all in favor voting instead of a roll call voting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director klein -Jerome? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Gordon? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Poshton? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Director Potts, may I have a motion to adjourn the organizational meeting? So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Meeting adjourned.